When it comes to venomous animals here in Australia, after our snakes, the next most infamous thing has to be our spiders. But there's really only two species of spider that really pose any significant risk to human beings. The first is the funnel web spider, which we've covered pretty extensively in one of our recent videos. But the second is this girl here the redback spider, and that's what we're gonna talk about today. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you 10 facts about the redback spider that I think you guys didn't know. Stick around. Fact number one, the redback spider is actually a distinct native Australian species. Now, this might not sound like news to most people. When people think of Australia, they probably think of redback spiders. But the taxonomy of which family the redback fit into has actually been up for debate for quite some time. From the 1870s, when this species was discovered, right up to the 1950s, the redback spider was considered its own species. But in the 1950s, an arachnologist, a spider expert from Harvard University, reclassified the redback spider as simply a subspecies, a variant of the black widow spider, which is found around the world. And this theory that we just had a different type of black widow stood right up until 2004 when genetic analysis showed that the redback spider along with their cousin the katipo over in New Zealand are distinct enough from the widow spiders to be in their own species. So the redback spider might be related to the black widows but today it is a distinct native Australian species. Number two, when Europeans first discovered the redback spider we actually believed it was an introduced species that had come here from another country. And this is because when they were first discovered in the 1870s, the first reports of redback spiders here in Australia were basically around seaports, places where cargo was coming in and going out. And because these guys do share relatives overseas, it was believed that they'd somehow made their way here to Australia. Now we now know that this species has been here for a lot longer than that, thanks to DNA and things like this. But what some of the other evidence that has contributed to this species being considered iconically Australian, is the vast array of Aboriginal names that we have for the redback spider, which is a pretty good indicator that their presence here well predates European existence on Australia. What we have found though is, we weren't finding these guys prior to the 1870s because when Europeans first arrived to Australia, the redback spider had a fairly limited range. It was found in dry, arid parts of sort of central South Australia, Western Australia, places like this. They don't like being cold or wet. When Europeans arrived here, we built all these buildings and we provided a huge amount of microhabitats that have allowed redbacks to expand pretty much all across Australia. So while these guys might not have been found across all of Australia, they aren't an introduced species. They're just an Australian native that's taken advantage of everything we've done here. Number three, while the redback spider might be a native Australian species, today these guys are found all over the world. There's established populations of redback spiders in the United Arab Emirates, in Iran, in New Zealand, in India, uh, even places like England and Belgium, where they're basically living in people's greenhouses and being transported from one greenhouse to another in pot plants and things like this. Now, this is particularly worrying in places like Japan, where redbacks have been popping up fairly frequently and they're breeding there, and they have no dangerous spiders. So the locals are not used to being careful around spiders, being careful where they put their fingers, and they're having to set up specific educational campaigns to teach people what to do if you're bitten by a redback spider. Now, the things that allow them to colonize the world so successfully is these guys are really tough animals. A female redback spider can survive 300 days without eating. So if she gets locked up in freight getting sent to another country in the world, she can get anywhere in the world before she's gonna starve to death. Once she arrives there, she doesn't need a bloke. If she's mated back here in Australia, she can go two years of laying more and more eggs, more and more baby redback spiders without ever having to mate again. So these guys are really born colonizers and it's enabled them to turn up over a huge section of the world today. Number four, while redbacks turning up in other countries is usually a human safety issue, in New Zealand, these guys actually pose a conservation issue. And that is because like I said, New Zealand has their own spider, the katipo, which is very closely related to the redback. Closely enough, in fact, that redback spiders are actually able to hybridize, crossbreed with the katipo, basically placing it at risk of genetic extinction, where we're just gonna have hybrids in between. Now what's really interesting is male redbacks can mate with female katipos, but male katipos can't mate with female redbacks. And the reason for this is, 
that the male redback is a lot smaller than the male catipo. So while a male redback can crawl up to a female catipo and she doesn't cannibalize him, male catipos are large enough that rather than trigger a breeding response, when she comes into a female redback's web, he's gonna trigger a feeding response and male catipos end up as a lunch for female redbacks. But these guys do pose a conservation risk to the cutiver spider of New Zealand. Some scientists have discovered that they can use certain pheromones from female redbacks that haven't been mated that only attract male redbacks. And hopefully one day we can basically selectively trap the male Australian redbacks in New Zealand and allow the katipo to continue to exist in its pure form. But, but and between now and then, the redback spider does place a conservational risk to a native New Zealand species. Number five. The redback spider was actually on an Australian postage stamp back in 2006 as part of a dangerous Australians campaign, but they had to pull it because unlike the other animals that were on their dangerous Australian stamps, the redback spider was, was basically life-size. He's the size of the stamp. And these guys are well known for living in people's letterboxes. So there was a real fear that people would see this life-size redback spider in their letterbox mistake it for a redback spider, get a fright, hurt themselves, whatever. So there is a few redback spider posted stamps coming out, but as of 2006, when they were invented, they never went into circulation. So they are basically collector's items. So there's redback spider stamps that are actually very collectible here in Australia. If that's not crazy enough, it's not just the males who are on the menu. Female redback spiders will cannibalize on other female redback spiders and they'll even eat their own offspring. When their babies hatch out of these little eggs, they'll eat their babies if they get too hungry, the babies get too close. And the babies from the day they hatch will start eating each other right up until they leave the web. So if you think you've got family problems at home, redback spiders, mum's eating dad, mum's eating your brothers and sisters, they're eating each other. These guys are really diehard cannibals. Number seven, some male redback spiders have figured out a special trick to avoid being eaten by females. And what they do is that female redbacks, right before their last molt, when they're basically sexually mature, already have all their reproductive organs inside. What they lack is any external openings to be able to mate with. And some male redback spiders have learnt to basically bite a hole through these female redbacks' abdomens and insert their sperm, insert their genetic material, and that female will basically molt, turn into an adult, and she'll already be fertilised. Interestingly, sub-adult female redbacks don't have the same feeding response for a male. So the males, while they use up all their material, they can't breed again, they do manage to crawl away and live out the rest of their short lives, as opposed to if they were mating with an adult mature redback spider who's gonna eat them for dinner. Number eight, the redback spider is arguably the most dangerous spider in Australia. In fact, the redback spider actually bites more people than any other venomous animal in the country. Now it's true these guys are not as venomous as the vast majority of our serious snakes you think about. They're not as venomous as the funnel web spiders, but they've actually been responsible for 14 deaths from this one species. Whereas the Sydney funnel web has only been responsible for 13 deaths. Now, a big part of this is basically because of their distribution. The Sydney funnel webs found within a couple of hundred kilometers of Sydney, whereas redback spiders today are found all around Australia. So as we've said in our recent snake video, uh, distribution is a big part of what makes an animal dangerous, coming into contact with people, and redbacks come into contact with a lot of people. Now this wide distribution, this contact that they have with people, means that somewhere between two and 10,000 people a year are bitten by redback spiders here in Australia, and there's 250 people a year required doses of redback spider antivenom, which, like I said, is more than any other venomous animal. No antivenom is given out as regularly in Australia as redback antivenom. Now, as far as the bites goes, the vast majority have happened distally, basically on the arms, the legs, very few of them happen to the body, but bites to the head have actually been increasing in recent years. And this is basically the result of the push that we have for safety in things like agriculture. More and more people are wearing motorbike helmets and earmuffs when they're working. They're not checking what's in them. And bites to the head, while they used to be incredibly rare, are actually slowly on the rise from people wearing earmuffs or helmets and not having a look inside them at first. So it's a good example. With funnel webs, make sure you check your shoes. With redback spiders, make sure you check your ear mouse or your helmet before you put it on, and hopefully you won't get bitten by the most dangerous spider in the country. Number nine. As I've already said, we're lucky in Australia that we do have a redback spider anti-venom. But unlike the funnel web spider, we have had one death 
since antivenom became available. Back in 2006, a young bloke was bitten by a redback spider in New South Wales after he was bitten bushwalking. He went to hospital, he was sent home, and six days later passed away as a result of complications after his bite. So there has been a death in recent years from a redback spider. Thankfully, we do have this antivenom, and this certainly helps reduce that to almost no deaths, but it still is a medically significant animal. This antivenom, just like snake antivenom, is made basically using horses. They take the venom from the redback spider, inject it into a horse, the horse gets sick, he recovers, they take his blood, they clean it up, and that's antivenom. So there is a bunch of side effects and things like this that are possible, but since antivenom became available, we have one death from the redback spider compared to the 13 in the years prior. And lastly, number 10. While redback spider antivenom certainly has the potential to save a lot of people, in the vast majority of cases, it's not really necessary. In fact, antivenom is only given in between 2 and 10% of cases where people present to hospital having been bitten by a redback spider. In the vast majority of cases, ice to reduce the swelling and painkillers is all that's really required for a healthy adult human being. This being said, it is a medically significant animal. So if you are bitten by a redback spider, you wanna get in touch with your doctor. It's not something that people generally rush to hospital in an ambulance, but you wanna get in touch with your doctor, you wanna apply ice, things like this, and basically stay in touch because as we said, we've had somebody back in 2006 pass away six days after his bite and back before antivenom, we have records of people going as long as 30 days post bite passing away from redback spider bites. But turns out that the vast majority of cases from redback spiders don't even require antivenom. So there you go guys. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about what's possibly the most infamous spider in all of Australia. And let me know in the comments how many of these 10 facts did you know, or how many were new to you? And maybe let us know what animals you'd like to see featured on the channel. Now, if you do want to help the channel out, there's a few things you can do. We've now got merch, we've got jumpers, mugs, and you can sign up to our Patreon, where there's a whole bunch of perks that we talk about on there. But the biggest thing you guys can do is just like and subscribe to the channel. I appreciate every single person watching, sharing, viewing. You guys mean the world to us. But check on back next week, because there's a lot more wildlife content coming out. But between now and then, be nice to wildlife, even the little creepy guys. Have a good one and take care.